And I've also done other things. I've decorated my entire trailer as the character's house. I've stayed in character all day with the accent. Like I've tried all the things and the, the, the listening is like, that's where, that's like, bottom that's the bottom line because acting is reacting and if you're not and you can't react if you don't hear what, what what's just been said to you you know what i mean if you're all up in here and they say you know why are you so sad and you're cracking up it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think it also like it gets you out of your plans you know sometimes when you learn your scene and you're ready to go to work and then the other person does the scene in a way that like you never like i love when they roll on rehearsal for this reason like when when they do it in a way that you never expected and like if you're really listening to that then you're just going to be there and you're just going to be those two people having that conversation or argument welcome to the sag after foundations conversations at home program i'm audrey cleo yap and now i want to introduce our actors for today's panel benga akina bay Ever Carradine, Curtis Cook, and Tiana Koye. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. 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 All right. So today we're talking about the journey of the working actor. And who better to ask about this than all of you actual working actors? So my first question is sort of just a background question. I want to know, you know, how did you embark on your career as an actor? Like, what was the moment? that made you go, you know what, I want to pursue this for a living. Curtis, I want to start with you because if I did my research correctly, you have actually a, a very strong dance background. Uh, and, and was that sort of like a natural extension of that? Okay, so I don't have a strong dance background because my wife, <laughs> if she can hear me, she's a classically trained modern dancer. <laughs> I did dance um, when I was younger with Dayton Contemporary Dance Company in their second company. But this was back in uh, you know, a long time ago, in the <laughs> early 80s or so, when like boys were scarce. So anytime <laughs> any man came into the dance room, they was like, hey, come on, you can do it. And I was kind of big back then. Um, but I, uh, I did dance for a while. Um, I realized it was a, a, a skill that um, was not second nature to me. Um, I, um, I have so much respect for dancers to this day because of that. Um, I, um, I did... Um, community theater in Dayton, Ohio. Um, I did high school theater in Dayton, Ohio. Um, subsequently, um, I did this program called The Muse Machine, which was um, a culmination of all the cities in this in our Ohio region, which got me my um, my full scholarship into Mount Beach Theater School in London, England. Um, when, I, when, I, when did I originally get the bug? Probably around about seven or eight years old. You know that story at a, a Christmas pageant when they asked me to come on stage to do something really quick and I just took the stage and everybody laughed and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And um, I haven't looked back since. Uh, Benga, talking about you know, different kinds of backgrounds. I mean, you had, you went to school on an athletic scholarship or you were a wrestler at some point. And, and then yeah, tell yeah. me about that pivot into, into doing what you do now. Uh, well, I, as you mentioned, I went to school on a wrestling scholarship. Uh, go Bucknell, go Bison. Uh, it was, it was, I loved it. I still love wrestling. I don't, I don't, wrestling, I don't get to do it as much as, um, as I obviously used to, but, uh, it could just change the whole vector of my life. And then, um, when I graduated, I worked for the federal government for a year, at, uh, the Corporation for National Service. So it was a legislative assistant. Uh, and they were the headquarters of AmeriCorps, Vista, and Triple C. Volunteer programs in the United States, uh, some some major volunteer programs, and I got curious about acting. Someone came by my cubicle, told me that they had a friend who was in town who was an actor, and I was just curious, like, like how I didn't never I never thought of it as something that we did as a living. So I just asked, "How did your friends start doing that?" Not because I was interested, and uh, and the person just was real dismissive. Well, you couldn't do it because my friend just said whatever, and that just sparked this curiosity. I was like, "A word." And so the, it was it was mainly curiosity. I just I just wanted to find out more about the world, you know, what actors did, you know, what they yeah, like it, it wasn't something I was looking to necessarily take a leap in. But once I started digging in and just like reading all these books and going online, Google had just launched then. I know I'm dating myself. So I was just like I was finding out like just a lot of information. So and it kind of just started that way. Awesome. And ever our Los Angeles native, 
you I, grew up or sort of grew up around this, right? I did. I mean, my grandfather was an actor. My uncles are all actors. My father's an actor. Um, and I, I think I had an experience that isn't too, you know, I was sort of like, a, um, it was my secret that I wanted to be an actor. And then when I went to college, I was a sociology anthropology major at first. And I also did a play and I realized how much more fun I was having doing the play than I was, you know, doing you know, studying about Papua New Guinea. So I kind of had a, had a come to Jesus moment. And I thought if I could enjoy my job as much as I enjoy doing this play, like how lucky would I be? And so I called my dad, I switched my major. Um, I was lucky enough to get my SAG card while I was still in college. Um, and I just sort of hit the ground running from there. What was dad's reaction when you told him? like just like overwhelming disappointment like sadness <laughs> disappointment heartache he felt he'd failed me uh you know he was like can't you be an artist instead and i was like but an actor is an artist i don't know you know i think that this is you know it's not an easy job and he knows that firsthand and i was his you know daughter and he just didn't want to see me have any heartache but he's come around he's on board now <laughs> Tiana, uh, I noticed you had a reaction to that too. <laughs> and it's something you can identify with in, in choosing to be an actor um, as your career. Yes, yes. I vividly remember applying for colleges and telling my dad that I didn't want to go to college. Um, and that was just not an option for this Nigerian immigrant. Like he was like, nope, you're, go you're going to college. Um, but I said, I want to study acting and theater and he sort of looked at me and he was like well that was just for fun right you've been doing this for <laughs> yeah um so oh, you really want to be a doctor right and you're just yeah. you're acting for fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> just anything else but yeah i think he he was maybe not surprised but um you know said you know tiana it's going to be really hard and it's and i said it's not going to be hard if you're good <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> because he was like, Tiana, there's not a lot of roles for black girls. I don't see a lot of black girls on, on TV or in this or on Broadway or whatever. And I was like, there is. <laughs> that was my that was my thinking when I was young. But yeah, so I definitely had somewhat of a similar experience to ever, but yeah. Well, I appreciate that both um, Ever and Tiana, you, you've already mentioned that, you know, you were sort of warned or, or it was actually prefaced, like, this is going to be hard. This is going to be a tough journey. And we know that this is sometimes called a heartbreak industry. I mean, rejection is the norm. So I want to know, like, how have you throughout your career uh, worked through coping with rejection, um, you know, going through audition processes, not getting the gig, like what? What sort of coping mechanisms do you have any uh, have you developed over the years ever? Let's start with you. I mean, I think that when I finally freed myself of when I didn't get a job, not taking it, that it wasn't personal. I think that that changed that changed everything for me. So I think that that's like that is my coping mechanism is that if the role doesn't come to me, it's not because of something that I did wrong, or I'm not talented enough, or they didn't like me. It's that that's not that role wasn't that's not my role. And that there's plenty of roles for all of us. Um, and that I can't remember when I when that clicked for me. But when it did click for me, everything became more enjoyable preparing for auditions, going in the room, having fun and playing and just allowing myself to after after I knew if I didn't get it, it wasn't because of something I did wrong, that I just that an audition is my 10 minutes to get to show them everything that I want this character to be and that that's enough. And if I don't land it from that, like, what are you going to do? You know, if they hire a girl that's like a carbon copy of me, sometimes that's a harder thing to not take personally. But for the most part, I'll say those jobs that really broke my heart when I saw who who was cast, that role was hers. It belonged to her. 
Uh, Curtis, what about for you? How have you uh, dealt with the rejection and, and, and what coping mechanisms have you cultivated for that throughout your career? Um, I haven't dealt with it. I'm still mad about a lot of roles. Oh. <laughs> unlike ever, unlike ever, when she can see somebody get up, be like, oh, they're horrible. I don't care. They just got an Oscar. They don't deserve <laughs> it. That's my Oscar. No, I'm joking. Um, I don't, you know, I, um, I just keep pushing through. I, I, I allow myself to be frustrated and sad and hurt and then realize that I can only be that be in that space for a short amount of time. I have to press through. I don't, I, I, I really admire someone who can say, you know what, I've done my best. Let me let it go. It wasn't for me. I admire that. And I, and I strive, I'm an old dude and I still strive to get there. Sometimes I feel like um, when I don't get something that I feel like I should have, there's a part of me that says, what can I learn from that experience? So I go through the process of, Oh, even if even if it's make believe, even if it's like there was something I felt like I I could have or should have done, I will apply that into the next um, opportunity. Um, coping mechanism me, uh, mechanisms. I think it's just the the wanting to to live in characters, wanting to continue to act, wanting to continue to perform, pushes me forward each time. I um, I someone told me a long time ago, a good friend of mine, is that you know. I didn't choose acting, acting chose me. I really can't really see myself doing and enjoying doing anything else. Um, um, I have a family and um, at one point I, I, was, I was a single dad and, and they ended on me to move forward. So that kept me moving and kept me going forward. Um, um, and, and although I may not have gotten those roles or those things, I never ever felt like I've lost. I've never felt like I didn't win because every time I learn something from it and it pushes me forward and it makes me try harder, um, even to the point where it's like, oh, I can't do anything. So now I need to rest. And that's a, a learning experience for me just to sit down sometime and just be like, breathe, bro. You, you're holding too much anxiety. You're holding too much. You, this is something that tells you you're trying too much. So relax. Um, I, I, um, I enjoy it and, um, and, and, and the love for it and the passion for it becomes my coping mechanism that allows me to move forward um, um, and trying to do it right. I'm still trying to get to that point where somebody watches my, one of my performances and say, oh my God, that was really good. And one day I'll get there. <laughs> I'm sure that has, has absolutely happened. Uh, Benga and Tiana. Uh, the two of you, so are you a leave it all in the room or do you hang on to it a little bit afterward? How have you dealt with the uh, the reality of rejection in this industry? Um, you know what? I used to be really precious about auditions, like saving sides, precious. The, the, oh. I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep this one right here just in case for the callback. Like, you know, I was just so precious about it. And now... Now I'm almost embarrassed to say that I like forget completely about it. So if I do book something, you know, it's like, wait, what was, I have to really go back and be like, what was that one again? Can you remind me? <laughs> um, so that's been really helpful. Just like, yes, leaving it all in the room and sort of whatever happened, happened and making sure I feel good and prepared about those five minutes um, because that's all I have control over. Um, so really zooming out and having that perspective, you know, like, okay, this is my time. And for today, if I'm unemployed, this is my five, 10 minutes to act. And that's amazing. And so feeling good about that, I'm excited about that has been really helpful. Um, <clears throat> I also will say surrounding myself with people and environments that really like nourish me in in different ways have been really helpful so i mean having um gosh i, I my friends used to call me 12 jobs t because i had like so many jobs that i had <laughs> um that i really well, were some of those jobs can you tell us <laughs> um, yeah i was uh i used to do dance party for like little kids in the hills uh, <laughs> So I would like lug around a giant suitcase with like face paint and makeup and games. And I would teach them a dance, you know, perform for the parents. I'd do face paint. I would do that. I would do um, camps. I taught 
kids musical theater for a little bit. I did a lot of fitness as well. I taught like bar and hit workouts. Um, I did berries. I, I've always chosen day jobs that have um, filled me up in ways that I needed, you know, like being around kids and being around people that I really love or moving my body um, to release anything that's like built up over the week or maybe that bad audition that I didn't feel so great about uh, has really been a good coping mechanism for me, I think. Yeah. Bingo, let's hear from you. Drugs and alcohol. Hey. <laughs> there it is. There's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all drunk right now. Let's just say, it. let's just say, it. no, the, the, it's, I mean, it's all these things, learning to not be precious about it. Um, I, I you have other passions. Yeah. I, I think for me, that's, that's key. Like, I, I, I love acting, but it's something I do. It's not who I am. And I've been, I've been very fortunate to be able to, to, express myself that way when it's time and use it as a, as a paintbrush but then there's other paintbrushes and other colors um and like like tiana said about finding things and, and people surrounding yourself with things that nourish you you know i i yeah I, I i have to because life is so life is full of so many different things and if 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 acting was the only thing i did i'm not one of those people where it's the only thing that fills my way and that's and that's great that you know, just to have to be so singular in a passion, um, but uh, I have to, I, I have to find other things, um, and that actually helps me as far as my acting. So I, I, I can just like leave it and not be precious with the, with these auditions and these things that that we don't get, um, and also be and show up this when I show up, like because I'm it's not I'm not on my pins and needles. Like it's just like let me just have fun. Like ever said, just just have fun. These are this is your time in the room. This is my time in the room just to do whatever I wanted and just be done with it. So, yeah, I've been very fortunate as far as that. It was hell before, I, like, like, like I ever said, when you when you make that click, like, oh, I, you know, you can just like release that. It does change everything, and just like it gives you a whole bunch of yourself back. And don't you feel like when you get yourself back, that then you book like it? It's the key. It's. It's that's the whole thing is sh sh revealing you. And if you're so in your head and singular about trying to just get the job, you can't yeah. be present and be be whatever that unique bit of you that that role means. Absolutely, distract yourself with whatever will relax you, will make you happy outside of this, and then that will, like you said, you start start booking. I, I love that. And let's dive more into kind of your individual processes when it comes to uh, whether it's auditioning or whether you've landed the role. So where does the research come in? Like, what is your process for that? Uh, do you start, you know, do you use creative tools? Do you start building kind of like an inner life for your characters? Do you start a diary for them? I'm really curious about, uh, um, you know, mining your thoughts about that. Um, Benga, let's start with you. Where does that process begin? It's changed over the years. You know, I used to, because I, 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 you know, as I've changed and as my, my tools have changed, I, I get my needs have changed. Um, when I first started, I always felt I was like behind everyone I was working with. I, I knew, you know, very little. I started acting as an adult. So I just always felt like I was catching up. So I would read a play a week, a contemporary play a week, Pascal play a week. I'd, Learn monologues one when one line at a time. Fill up whole note, notebooks, singing them. Just it, and then I was in a play every night, so I was just trying to, you know. And that was good for then, but that, I don't know if that, how sustainable that was, especially I when I when I started to grow um, and take on other other tools in, other, in order to do it better. Um, now, now, I think it's it, it's about truth. It's all it, it's just like if you just like start with the truth of it for me. I start with the truth of a character, or truth in text, and then build the character off of that. Um, that it's it's that's gen generally um, generally not always but generally enough um, to 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 dive into a part. Tiana, what about for you? Where does the process start? Um. Wow. So booking okay, versus like actually, <laughs> could be a little different. But lately, I found. Um, 
taking the text and like walking around and being outside has been really helpful for me. Um, and sort of go into like a deep imagining of where I am and who I am and what life is like walking in the shoes of that character. Um, more recently in the last uh, role that I did, I made a playlist. I did do a diary for specific events. Um, and, and that's always really fun for me. I always love like music. I'm very driven by music. And so having a playlist or like a vision board of who this girl is really gives me a picture and then I can like get into it a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, I've really, on a very simple level, I've really enjoyed just like putting my headphones on and walking outside and, and, and just sort of imagining where I am and who I am as this, as the character. That's been, that's been really good too. And Curtis and Ever, I want to hear from the two of you. At the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Everybody so at work. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I am um, like Benga. I think that it, it definitely starts with the text, right? And it depends on what the project is, be it a movie, a television show, or um, a play. And depending on how much time you have to get into that character, you know what I mean? And um, so for me, it starts with what is being said and what, what the character is doing and what their, what their life is on that page. And then I do create a back history for them. I love that. I love the play of taking parts of myself and parts of my family members and parts of people that I've known and watched. And I'm one of those people that always watches people. So I'm constantly watching, just watching individuals and picking up um, um, idiosyncrasies from, all, uh, from, from everyone I see and meet. And so when I get an opportunity to find a character that I feel is so far from who and what I am, it's, it's fun for me to find those things that I've picked up before and see how natural I can make those things in this person. So I create this whole kind of backstory and lineage of, based on the script, again, based on the information that I'm given, and then I kind of branch out. Um, um, I remember on one television project, I was just like a small recur. And if you were to look at my notes, you'd be like, bruh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? But I was like, no, this, I mean, that's the, that's the fun for me. It's the play. I, I love just the, the idea of just creating something and having it be so, hopefully so seamless and, and so to life that you, you really don't know if, um, if it's me or if it's not me. Um, um, therapist would say that's something else but we're not gonna go into that right now <laughs> um, <laughs> but um so i do i, I begin no get I, into it get into it <laughs> we are that's not right. going there we are I not the vulnerabilities <laughs> <laughs> but that's so so that's that's um, a, a big part of my process is just finding the backstory for that individual and trying to find out what kind of, like, like Tiana was saying, what kind of music they would listen to, what kind of colors they would like, you know, all of those simple things. What kind of food do they like? What do they drink? Do they not drink? You know, all those little outside things to bring yourself into the center of the person and the character and who they love and what they love and why do they love it and all of that. So I, I have notebooks upon notebooks in this basement. And, you know, and I'll bring them out and you'll be like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> something else to do. What did you say, Bing? I need yeah. to do. Well, you might need a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever find yourself going back to those to those sources then too? Just you know, to um, you do you do go yeah. back. And, and I, yeah. the thing I get scared of sometimes is um, be, 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 especially <clears throat> when project and I don't know how you guys audition, but sometimes I, I audition on Tuesday and it'd be like, okay, Wednesday morning, I need you on set at five. You're like, what? So sometimes I, I hope that because it's such a quick turnaround that I'm not just relying on some trick. You know what I mean? Something that I've created before. So, so I jump in. I try to do what I did on the day of the call or whatever, the audition or whatever, you know, try to create that life. And then I go back and I look at something that was kind of similar to that character. And I try to find and be like, oh, did you, what you doing, blah, 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 at this point? And it's like, oh, yeah, you were kind of doing blah, 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 blah. You need to go out and, and expose yourself, travel again, read different books, watch different kind of television shows to refuel my brain of, of different aspects of life after that. And so, um, so yeah, so sometimes I find myself. And ever, uh, how do you go about creating the, uh, the inner life of your characters? You know, I feel like I've done it all. 
But most, like I've had the luxury in the past, like five years, I've been walking around in the same character's shoes, which is a very different experience of preparing for a role sort of as a one-off. And um, when you, I feel like when you have that, when you're on something for a while and you keep coming back to it, you know, every season, my fear specifically with Handmaid's Tale is like, how am I going to find her again? Who is Naomi? Who is this world? How am I going to do it? And for me, the biggest piece of that puzzle has been um, wardrobe and costumes. And like for me, when I come in and zip up or I come in and go to the fitting, it puts together and maybe because it's tactile and it's visual, it kind of can put together that final piece of the character. And so it's happened a lot too, you know, when you do these guest spots and like you were saying, Curtis, you audition on a Tuesday and then Wednesday you show up and you're trying to kind of replicate whatever you did at that audition. Also then the wardrobe is like such a huge piece of the puzzle for me. It helps me. I like fashion. I, I like art. It's like the piece of the puzzle that I don't know, that makes that person com complete. And it's a little bit of cheating, but it's okay. Like it's, it's okay if I understand who this woman is by her handbag and her Chanel jacket. You know what I mean? Like that's a, that's, that's something that happens in life. And also, like you were saying, truth. Like if, if I'm ever confused, if I ever feel like I didn't do my research or I, I, there's a hole and I'm in the middle of the scene and it's my close up, I just try to get into my body and my breath and listen and hope that whatever part of that character that I do know deep inside that she can just come out. And I realize that sounds sort of like pretentious, but I don't mean it to be. I've been doing this a long time. And that's the thing that I can always come back to is if I can be present in my body and if I can listen to the person that I'm having the conversation with in the scene, I, I kind of leave it up to the juju. Do you know what I mean? Like it just, you have to let, let it, let it live in you. And all the preparations you've done before, too, and all the other products. A hundred percent. They're all there. They're all there. And you have to, like, you're, like, all your, you just have to trust that you did it. It's crazy. I, I, I remember seeing uh, interviews with, uh, with actors who are, who are legends that, that I grew up watching, that I was working, I was respecting. You've done everything. Uh, and I think this one was Pacino. And, uh, and, and he was, even with everything he's done, he still needs to be reminded or remind himself or get, you know, or do things to remind himself to just like listen to get and which is the, at the center of every. It's crazy, like how, but how that just kind of like brings brings one back to the center, so you can. And if and if we just remind ourselves like that, like that's all we have to do. Then it's like, oh, like that it becomes it's a difficult thing that's actually quite simple, but it's also difficult. It's it's. it's yeah. Well, because you have to try. It's scary. It's sort. It's you're very naked. If that's if you're only relying on the truth and listening, which you should be, or that's what we should all try to be. But it is. It's scary and vulnerable, and and it might not work. You might have a lot of crappy tape. Like who knows? You know, anything's possible. But and I've also done other things. I've decorated my entire trailer as the character's house. I've stayed in character all day with the accent. Like I've tried all the things and the, the, the listening is like, that's where that's like the bottom. That's the bottom. Line. Because acting is reacting. And if you're not, and you can't react, if you don't hear what, what, what's just been said to you, you know, what I mean, if you're all up in here and they say, you know, why are you so sad and you're cracking up? It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think it also like it gets you out of your plans you know sometimes when you learn your scene and you're ready to go to work and then the other person does the scene in a way that like you never like i love when they roll on rehearsal for this reason like when when they do it in a way that you never expected and like if you're really listening to that then you're just going to be there and you're just going to be those two people having that conversation or argument or whatever yeah yeah, and I mean, sort of piggybacking off of that, I feel like we've all the same thing, but yeah. being character's thoughts and being present there and just and just knowing and trusting that you have it back there. 
athletes, football players do not bring the weights onto the field. They do not, you know, and, and so similar to that, we can't bring all of the homework and everything that we've done onto set like like an athlete would bring weights onto the field, right? We have to know and trust, and it is very, very scary as ever said, but I find um, pulling you know, another actor that I have a scene with aside and, and just kind of talking through the scene together and listening to each other. I'm able to like have the thoughts in my character's perspective and, and be present with that actor and find new, new things about the scene and talk about it. And that's always really helpful to me as well. So yeah, I'd say my mantra lately has been tell the truth, tell the truth. Um, before any scene, I'm like, Girl, just tell the truth. You're good. You got it. You did the homework. You're fine. Now just have fun. Tell the truth. Um, so I find that to be helpful and just thinking, thinking character thoughts and listening. I love all, what, a, what a great metaphor. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. For uh, I'm just when she said that, tell the truth and write it. There's nothing more exciting to me. There is something more exciting to me. But that feeling of right before action, or they say action in that hush that goes through that whole space. And it's like, if, and if you allow yourself to, to hear it, it could numb you because there's, and, and especially if it's like you're seeing in your close up, whatever, and it's like, there's no sound, literally. And they're like, in action. And you're like, and if, and if for any moment you recognize it too long, you're pulled out of the moment. I don't know if this is me. You get pulled out of the moment and it's like, okay, hold it. We need to, okay, let's go back to one because I just got caught up in the magic of this space. But when you don't and you just listen and they say action, how it, it soars the peace and whatever else, it just, it just literally lifts the whole space in the room. And that's, and that's, that's a church to me sometimes. It really is a church. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, this leads really well into my next question, which uh, Tiana, you already sort of touched on and ever too, um, which is collaborating, you know, whether it's with your fellow actors, but specifically, I want to know about, and this is also project dependent, but with directors and writers, um, how do you go about forging that relationship, uh, whether it's for a guest spot or for like for you ever, um, you know, a reoccurring role or, you know, a show that you've been on for season after season. By the way, let's give it up for the costume designers on Handmaid's Tale. They've just cultivated an entirely yeah. aesthetic <laughs> unto its own. Uh, but yeah, tell me about collaborating specifically with directors and writers, how you give feed, how you, how you, how that exchange goes, you know, as you are working on these projects. Um, Curtis, let's start with you. Yeah, it's, it's different each time, right? Because, you know, the, because the people are different each time. But so like on a television show, like, for instance, like for, like the, the, the Shy, it, it in being fortunate enough to have been there for now five seasons, um, four seasons, one to two, fifth. Thank you. We, um, <laughs> um, it, you, you find a way, one, to service what their ideal is, right? Because all, like I said, all the work that I kind of do in my, you know, history, blah, 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 create my character, I would assume that they have done in creating what they're writing. So I don't want to disrespect that in any way. So if it comes to me and it doesn't make sense to me, I still want to say there was a process that I have, I am totally unprivy to that you went to to get to this point. So I never want to just make it seem like this is, ah, why would you? So there's a, a delicate way in which I even a, a, a broach them with any kind of questions. My first objective is to try to make this thing live as they wrote it, as they created within the world that I've created as well, because I believe that's the beauty of the collaboration is the the two different worlds, if 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 need be, or the, the two different thoughts that come together and makes this new thing, right? Because um, it's easy, it's easy to have someone say, this is how it is, this is how I want it, want it to be done. No bar, no, you know, whatever. But it's harder when someone says, you know what, how can I slice my piece into this or whatever? So the, the conversations are, are different. Um, I sometimes, um, would like to just say, you know, um, is there, is there space for this character to do this in this place? And, 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 and if it's, uh, 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 we have time or whatever, they say, you know what, we'll, we'll try one that way or let's see what that looks like or, um, 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 actually, no, we don't, we don't, we're trying to move in this direction. 
So, you know, you, you, you move in their direction. Um, movies, you know, are different. Uh, you know, hopefully you have an opportunity to sit down and meet and talk with the director and you've seen the outline for your character and you have an opportunity to say, hey, is there space to have this here? And how can we inject this here? Because I feel like that's really important to me and to this Sorry, character. Uh, okay, Sorry, and Siri's mad. Siri. See, Siri needs to know, because I'm telling you. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's like, um, so it's different in that way. And in a play, it's totally different again, right? Because now you have a long journey of time. And if it's an original piece, then you can, you know, there's parts and different ways that you can have a conversation and sit down and say, I think that this may be, may serve the piece in a different way if we are allowed to go down this different pathway. So it's, I mean, it, I mean, I guess it's all kind of the same way, but different, but it just, it, and it also relies on the individual that you're talking to. I mean, Steven Spielberg, I just shut up and say my words. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, the, the guy that just came out of NYU, I'll be like, hey, bro, let me look. What we need is. Um, <laughs> uh, Benga, let's hear from you. To me, the for me, the most important thing is is the collaboration and the experience um uh, I'm having with with the other actors on set, the writers, producers. They, like that's that's the most uh, that's what I, I that's what I go into it for and that's what I'll take away from it. I, I don't actually mo most of the stuff I'll I don't never even really watch when it's done. But I like but I do will remember what it was the process was working with those people. So that that, that so I I try to find a way to learn people's languages. Uh, and it's interesting. I mean, those sets are sets are you know uh, these microcosms of other microcosms and there's things you know pre-existing before you that you're walking into and there's things people are carrying with them so and then on top of all that you still have to try to get the work done so it's it's so there's a lot of energy that's spent just being on a set before you even do the work um and 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 but one of the things i love also about it is you know what curtis mentioned as far as like you have that moment right when when there's action and i was i it occurred to me like there's so many things happening in a building, you know, like a stage or or a play or a theater, and everything happening: the costume department, janitorial staff, ushers, actors, reading lines, everything. You know, you know, just food being sold out. Everything is being done in an effort to serve that one thing that's happening in that moment right there, right? And which is why on all these different, you know, these things are happening. So it makes it makes those spaces, you know, magical. Like 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 I could have said, you know because all these different microcosms are happening. So when it comes to collaboration, I, 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 I guess I, I, I kind of look at it and everyone's got, you know, different roles to play for this, for this unified goal at the end, whether they realize they're part of that unified goal or not. And so I, I, I in my mind, it's like, it helps me to not just think of it as like, you know, this because we're in a play or because we're in a stage, the acting is the most important thing. But like it, I, I like to think about like all the other things that are going on, um, and those other people in their other worlds in that world, and they were all like, come from team sports. So I think about teams a lot, teams a lot. Like we're on the same team, you know. When I see some of the crew from crew I've been working with in one way or another, in one show or another for like twenty years, you know, like oh, and and I like I know that they have my back. I know they have my, you know, I have theirs and so on. And we're all driving to try to make the day, and it, it's it's. It's just great solid, you know, the kids have grown up, you know, all that, all those things. So to me, that's, that's, that's what, that's the collaborative process that, you know, and the, the acting is the fun part that we get to, we, fun for me, I get to do, you know, you know, when we're collaborating in that way. I don't, I don't know if I answered the question, but that's kind of how I look at it when it comes to the collaboration. Of course, there's the director and the writer and, you know, whatever they want to do, whatever, but I like, I like the, I like all the 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 other other elements, all the other, all the elements to it. Um, and Tiana and Eversa, do you feel like you have that latitude on projects that you're on to you know to talk to a director or a writer about like does this character have this room to do this? You know, yeah. tell me about collab that kind of collaboration. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> go, you go, you go. <laughs> Same thing, Mary. Um, yeah, you know, I I came from a very strong theatrical background, um, specifically musical theater. And with that genre, I think there is this idea of, you know, you're there for a very specific job. And it's to 
it's to fill space um, and create a story around the leads that are leading the show. And I think because of that, because of that training that I had, I always, I'm having to do a lot of unlearning um, in taking up space and um, asking questions and, and being more collaborative with the directors and the writers that I work with. Um, more recently, I, you know, if I am going to do a project, I've like taken upon myself to immediately ask for a quick little Zoom with the director and the writers just to, just to get to know them. Um, I just finished a series and for Panhandle with Carla Kettner and, um, and Nick Stoller. And as soon as I got that, I was like, I want to know, I want to know how this happened. I want to know your process. I want to know how you thought of this character. And also, I just want to like break the ice. I don't want this to be awkward. I want, I want us to feel um, eventually like we're a family and that we're creating this story and these characters together. And I think the way, um, best way to do that is to break the ice and have a meeting, go out to dinner. Um, and previously I didn't always feel like I could do that. Right. Um, so I'm, I, it's, I think it's different for every project, like we mentioned, you know, and, um, but the ones that you do have authority and control over those situations, I think it is good to, to meet with the directors and the writers and the showrunners just to, just to form that camaraderie because um, as Benga said, you know, on set and it, that it, trickle, it trickles down, you know, it really does. So that, that relationship that you formed with your showrunner, you know, people on set are going to feel that. And you want to make sure that everyone on set feels like it is also their set. Um, that, that's how I feel. I feel like it's a more enjoyable experience for everyone when we, when we know each other, when everyone feels respected and valued and the way of getting there is just by creating conversation and like getting to know each other. Um, and there's so much time to do that, you know, I feel like, <laughs> or maybe, yeah, I think that there, there's so much time to do that in between setups, in between takes. Um, if you have a moment and you, and you can, you know, sort of disconnect from the character or you're feeling comfortable and in that space, like those moments are so special. Um, and I really do think that they foster just the best environment for everyone to really feel included, respected and valued for sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you guys have all said it so well, there's not much I can say, but I think everything that you are talking about translates. Like, you know, when you're on location on a film and then you, you're a, you become a family very quickly. Maybe I'm making this up, but I always feel like you can, you, it translates on film. You can feel, you can just feel a little spice of something. I don't know. My husband says that I'm literally the worst person to watch a film or television show with because I'm always pointing stuff like that out. Um, but like you were also saying, it's just trust and connection. Um, we're talking about working class actors. I've done more guest spots than I can count on every digit of my entire body. And sometimes when you're a guest spot, it's really just about coming in, knowing your lines, hitting your marks, you get two takes and sort of that's, um, that's your day. And now I'm losing my train of thought, but I guess what I'm saying is that's when trust comes in. Like, you have to trust that that director was hired to get this certain performance out of you and to make this show work with whatever you're offering. Um, I don't know. I'm losing my train of thought, but it's all coming back to trust for me. Like if you trust your director and you trust your writers, everything, everything should work. Well, or if it doesn't, it'll go down in the best time you've ever had in your entire life. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are running out of time. Uh, so my last really rapid fire question really quickly, because your fellow performers are watching this. So what is one piece of advice that you can impart upon them? Um, let's go Ever, Curtis, Tiana, and Bengo. All right. My... The thing that I was told by everybody when I first started acting, my family, all of our friends, everyone in this business was to save your money. 
and it used to drive me crazy. And I was like, why do I need to save my money? I'm going to make money. It's going to be fine. And then I started to work a lot. And then I realized that if you save your money, you will always be empowered to make the choices that you want to take. You will take the roles that you want to take. You won't chase roles for the money. So I just, I'm empowering you to say no, to, to save your money and, and do the roles that speak to you. Like this is a privilege and an honor, this job. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. And hopefully you saved your money and you're able to say no. Wow. Beautiful. Mm. I would say, um, um, save your money because <laughs> save your money. You're so <laughs> Save it all because your kids are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, that was do the work. Do the work of becoming an actor, and 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 that encompasses a lot. I know, but a lot of times we, I find that there's so many younger people that feel like I'm good, I'm able to, but haven't done the work. And then on top of that, be nice. Mm. Just try to be nice to everybody that's on that set or that play or anywhere because nobody has come to that place to have a to do a a, a horrible job nobody has come there to do their worst work everyone is there to have a good time or to do their best work and being pleasant and being um, um accessible um and and being able to be that way means you've done your work before you got there so you're not trying to stay in a place or whatever and so long way of saying, just do the work and please just be nice. Just be nice. It's, it's a beautiful place. I would say, um, hmm, gosh, there's so many, there's so many things. Yes, save your money. Um, <laughs> but um, my, my little bit of advice would be, you know, people won't always remember what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Um, so focusing on, yeah, being, being nice, being a good person and, and doing the work, not only for the job that's coming up, but on yourself. I think that that always informs your acting as well. You know, doing, do, do some self-study, take care of, take care of your mind, take care of your body, take care of your spirit, because, you know, it's a long, it's a long road. It's a long journey. And if you want longevity, you gotta take care of this. You gotta, you gotta take care of that. Um, and one last thing, you know, I, I'd say always find moments where you can kind of look back um, and and reach your hand out to help someone up, you know, like whether it's someone in college or like going back to your old place of employment, um, a mentorship, whatever the case may be. I think sometimes people forget about that aspect, you know, like it, you you got there, you're doing it. Um, and it was a lot of hard work and, and I think people often forget all those, all those little moments or those teachers or those, um, you know, even someone that you looked up to as you were a child that helped you or said something encouraging to you. Um, you know, so, so look back, look back, I'd say, and reach your hand out and see if you can mentor someone or assist someone and say their name in an important room. I think that that's always good too. This, this is all like, first of all, thank you all for that advice. I'm taking it all. I'm taking, I'm taking Same. it all. Same. <laughs> hey, and they, this, I, 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 there's save your money, but there's, there's something that actors, I don't think you'd necessarily think too much about. It's about investing your money. I'm a firm believer in making your money make money. So it's not all your, your, your labor that's doing it. Um, so like find ways, I think actors need to get their mind around that. Um, because we often operate out of scarcity. So to have a job or happy enough or uh, to have something to you know, pay the bills or, or to save the money, that's we're happy with that. But I really, really should think about having money, make money. But that's not my advice. I mean, that's advice. But my, my advice would be to, to develop your human outside of this thing, like develop your passions and your human outside of, out of, outside of acting. Like it's, it's, it's such a full, wonderful life. And you can be so many things. And then so many sides to to ourselves, and it, it will help the acting. It will feed into that, but that, it, that I don't think that's the reason to do it. I think just like develop your human, which will, will will help you be nice to other people, which will 
help you see other people, like it'll do all those things, help you be kind to yourself when you really need to start being kind to yourself, especially in this business. Just find your passions and develop your human. What a way to take us home, Benga. And thank you to everybody on this panel. This was so insightful. And thank you for sharing your experiences and your craft and your wisdom uh, with your fellow performers. Thank you so much. This was I hope I get to meet y'all one day in person. I know. I wish oh, we were. I was literally just thinking that. <laughs>